Hello. Hi, Richard. How are you? All right. How are you? So we have company tonight. I see. I see. Okay. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to look at some photos, as we usually do. In the late 1980s, Ed Koch selected LaGuardia Community College to be the repository for the Ed Koch papers. Well, uh, that's a very this? young uh, you carry. Who's next to him? Do you know who's next? The mayor and I get together to bring to the photographs what he brought to New York City, which is a spirit. All I can really tell you is that uh, if you have a project that you want to get done, then you give it to Jim and it'll get done. That's what, they say. Like, That's what they say about you. Well, it's true. <laughs> he had a spirit, he still has it, that lifted eight million people. Everybody gives him a lot of credit for solving the fiscal crisis. But that's just half the story. You can solve the fiscal crisis, but you still got to solve people's depression. New York was in the throes of a dramatic downturn. We were depressed. Most New Yorkers would walk around the street looking very glum. And the city was in great financial trouble. You'd go across the Cross Bronx Expressway and see abandoned buildings with decals in the what was then windows with little flower pots, uh, but no one living there. The city's reputation was actually in the sewer. Some mayors, they hide, they don't do news conferences, they, um, when they're in bad times, they make it look worse. Not Ed Koch. I went to countless community meetings. People were upset, disturbed, outraged, and um, what was my response? Well, initially it was sort of duck and cover, <laughs> you know. And then I went to some of these Ed Koch community meetings, and he didn't duck and cover. He'd say things like, you know, your streets are a mess. Well, what'd you expect? We don't have any money. We can't fix it immediately, but we're gonna fix it eventually. You know, he would do this thing, and. All of a sudden people say, well, he, that's, that's the truth. He doesn't have any money now, but he, you know. I think what he was able to do was to allow people to see the hope for the future if this was, if he got his way. And, or in the transit strike, for example. The morning uh, the strike began, he met with the police department uh, down near City Hall to go over what they, you know, review the plans. And he is standing at the meeting and looking out the window. He sees the people coming across the bridge. He walks right out of the meeting, goes downstairs, joins the crowd, and starts yelling at the crowd, come on, it's good to walk. I don't know the exact words, but he's encouraging their spirit and lets the people of New York know that he's on their side. This is his style, and uh, I think it's a very New York style, uh, and one that is courageous. Uh, it's one that it is who you see is who he is. Leadership. We're talking about leadership. We had a problem in paying vendors. I noticed that we never got any discounts for a payment. We had didn't have the best vendors, a lot of them schlock. And of course, the reason we didn't have good vendors is we didn't pay them mm. on time. So I called a meeting of the 10 top commissioners who bought 80% of what the city buys. He said, uh, I expect all of you to get your agencies on the ball here. And at the end of three months, I'm going to publish the names of the commissioners and their standing in paying on time, one to ten, and I'm going to give it to the press. So they began to scream, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. It's so embarrassing if you do. So I said, well, that's the intent. <laughs> and at the end of the three months, the list became available, and Gordon Davis was at the bottom of the list. There were days that I 
Wish I had a note from my mother saying Gordon is ill and can't come to work today. <laughs> I'm telling you. So he came in to see me and he said, uh, Mayor, I'm so embarrassed that I'm number 10, but I'll never be 10 again. I said, how do you know that? He said, because I called in my controller. And I said to my controller, if I'm number 10 again, it's your ass. <laughs> he was never 10 again. <laughs> so it worked. It worked. It worked. Let me tell you about the time Ed Koch and I had a, uh, I would say, a tough argument. You know, coming in the morning and people would be uncomfortable because we weren't talking. And so one day he came out and he said, Diane, this has to stop. Come into my office. So I went into his office and he said, this, this has to stop. I said, it can't stop because you owe me an apology. You were wrong and you need to apologize. And he said, I, I'm sorry. You're right. I was wrong. And now can we be friends? So I say, you've apologized. Now we can be friends. So he opens the door. This is what it was like. He opens the door between his office and the office in which we were all sitting and says, she was wrong, but I apologized. <laughs> now you have to love that. If I used to have a rule, never hired anybody who didn't have a sense of humor because we had too much to deal with. And besides, that person would have to be able to laugh with the mayor. When uh, Ed decided to go to Central America, uh, which was one of the scariest parts of my life, several of the countries that we visited were in the midst of war. <laughs> when we were in Nicaragua, it decided that we were visiting Victoria Chamorro, and she was the head of the opposition newspaper uh, of the Sandinistas. And many of us said, bad idea. You know, this woman, it's in a verbal war with the regime. For all of us to go to the presses of the newspaper, that was the opposition to the government, was a little too much, but not for Ed Koch. He said, nope, uh, we have to make sure that this part of the story is told. And we get a call that the Sandinistas forces were actually going to the paper, uh, and we're gonna take over the paper, and I know that the fact that we were going there saved the newspaper for that day uh, because there was no way uh, that Ortega was going to have anything happen to Ed Koch. The, the, the mayor of New York speaks about everything and has a platform like no other mayor. Uh, and Ed knew how to use that platform. We were delighted when Ed Koch thought that LaGuardia Community College would be the right place to leave his papers. Uh, I think it's, we have a connection. LaGuardia Community College has about 60,000 students. About two-thirds of them weren't born in the United States, and yet through the vibrancy of New York City, they are transforming New York City in exactly the same way as Ed Koch transformed this city to the world's capital. I've been with students here in the archive working on primary documents, and a student has looked at me and said, I feel so smart. That's what he gave to our thousands of students. You should look at, I think, this one right here. It's right. not rote. It's not memorizing dates. It's thinking. And that's what he gave us. Ed Koch was a man with a mission. He elevated public service for those of us who were lucky to be there with him. And we had a lot of fun 